So we pushed our database schema to our database, but what if we want to generate a migration for this project? Well, we can do that with this command here. As you can see, it generated this SQL migration file. So let's go back to VS Code and have a look at that file. So now there is a drizzle directory here. And then if I click here, I can see that I have this SQL file. There's also this meta directory here where drizzle just keeps track of the changes that were made and the migrations. So there's a journal and a snapshot. So this snapshot is a snapshot of our schema. Oh, and the file name for the SQL file is randomly generated. So now that we generated our SQL migration file, how do we actually run the SQL against our database? Well, let's go to the documentation and see what we need to do. So we've already declared our schema, so we can skip that. We've already created a configuration. We've already generated the migration. Okay, so this is how to run the migration. So as you can see, it's designed to be an opt-in solution. So you can actually run it using any tool. So if you just have a regular database client, you can just drop the SQL into that and run it if you wanted to. But if we want to use Drizzle's migrate helper, we can do that. So uh, I'll show you how to set that up now. I'll go ahead and copy this script here and then go back to VS Code. And I'll create a folder here called scripts. And I'll create a file called migrate.ts. And then I will paste it in here. All right, so it looks like the import is incorrect here. So instead of DB, this should be drizzle. Or let's see, uh, I think we need to go up one level and then slash DB. Sometimes the conventions that they use in the documentation are inconsistent uh, because you know we named this DB file drizzle instead of DB, so we have to change a few things around. So now we're getting this error because we're using the wrong migrator, so we'll have to find the right one. So I'll go ahead and delete that, and I'm going to hit um, control space to get this autocomplete. And Let's look to see if we can find the right one. So we have neon serverless. So I think this is the right one since we are using the neon serverless service. Okay, so I guess that's not it. Um, let's, oh, I think we need migrator. No, okay, let's try a different one. Okay, so after trying a couple of them, it looks like this one is the one that doesn't complain, or we don't get a TypeScript error here. So uh, we're also getting this error here, so we'll need to close uh, the connection, otherwise the script will hang. So, so we'll need to export the connection. So I will export the SQL there. And I'll save and then I'll go here. And then here I am going to get the SQL and we should be able to end the connection like that. So it looks like that doesn't exist on that type. Let's see if there's any way to end the connection. All right, so let's get to the bottom of why I can't end that database session. So. Uh, I went to the Neon database serverless documentation, and it looks like, let's scroll down here. So 
Under here, it says a query using the neon function as shown above is carried by an HTTPS fetch request. So because we're using HTTP fetch request, we don't have to worry about closing the connection at the end of our script like we would if we were to use the node Postgres package. So I can just remove this line here. All right, I'll save this file and then I'll go back to my terminal and then I will run this command. And TSX is just a tool that we could use to run our TypeScript scripts without having to first compile it and then run the compiled JavaScript. Okay, so we're getting this error here that says top level await is currently not supported with the CJS output format. I found this issue in GitHub for TSX, and it uh, looks like the solution is to either use the MJS or MTS extension, or you can set type module and package JSON. So uh, I went ahead and tried this solution here. So if I go to my package JSON, I added this to it, and then I ran it again, and it looks like it ran this time. Now, just to confirm that it ran, let's go back to the Neon console and then go to schema and then drizzle. And then you can see that there is a drizzle migrations table. And here is that first migration. So we have a hash and a created at timestamp. Just to clarify, nothing actually changed because we already had a to do table. And because we use this if not exists clause here, well, nothing was created because it already existed. If it didn't exist, it would have created this table.